Hi everybody. Um, this is a short presentation that will give you a bit of an insight into A-level art, craft and design. Um, the awarding body, the examination board, is Edexcel. So if you did want to go online and have a look at the whole specification, it's on there. It's under Pearson qualifications and you just click on subjects and go straight to art and design. Um, in a nutshell, the course is a two year course. Um, it consists of 60% coursework and 40% being the exam. So for the majority of you that are coming from um, Homer Green Senior School um, and indeed others from different schools, um, all of the exam boards have the same weighting. Um, therefore, you know, it's exactly the same as GCSE, basically. Um, there are some differences. Um, the course is really, really structured. Um, what we like to do in the art department is give students the um, free reign, if you like, to have starting points of their own. Um, I think this gives you freedom. It makes sure that you are interested in what you are doing. Um, it gives you an opportunity to learn about what your hobbies are, your passions are, your beliefs, your thoughts. We try and encourage students to be quite independent in their thought processes. And part of the course is um, looking at ideas and concepts, which is uh, quite a lot more mature in a way that, than GCSE. Um, in terms of getting onto the course, you will need to attain a level six or above at GCSE. We do recommend that you have a level six in English language, but we can be flexible on that, obviously, because when you look at the specification in detail, the annotation part of the A-level course is is quite a lot and also at the end of the course we do it at the end is a 3000 word essay but um, you do get quite a lot of help with that in order to structure it um, those of you that are taking English language will probably find it a little bit easier but don't let this put you off it's um, you've learned most of it at GCSE anyway it's just putting it into an essay format um, one of the things that I think it's important to know is you will learn a lot of life skills doing art and design. I'll give you some examples. Um, meeting deadlines, um, you'll understand the need for really, really good communication skills. Obviously, you'll learn to have mature artistic skills. Um, we have some of the best uh, results nationally. So, um, you know, you are going to come into a department that's going to teach you to get the best grades possible. And you will walk out of the A-level course um, with a whole range of different skills. It's not just drawing and painting, it's photography, it's mixed media. You can get yourself on the sewing machine, you can use clay, photography, installation. It is totally up to you and you will learn those skills during the, the two years. Um, we have a range of staff that teach um, A-level um, it's likely that you'll have more than one teacher for your A-level course, but this is this is a strength because um, one, one, one head OK gives you a range of opinions, two heads gives you more of a range of opinions. And then when you put your own opinion in with that, three heads are better than one. So um, we like to try and put more than one member of staff teaching the course in there. Do we know who those members of staff are yet? Um, we will do soon. Um, it's all down to the timetable. Um, deadlines. It's a big part of the course. It's a coursework based uh, subject. Um, you will be expected to meet deadlines. Um, the uh, expectations are that you meet every deadline, although we are flexible when things happen. Um, we are we are human and we understand that from time to time, then students can come to us and say, perhaps um, I've got this deadline in for another subject. Could I have an extra day or two to meet your deadline and we would probably be OK with that. As long as there's a good reason for it, then we are flexible on the deadlines. But it's to teach you what it's going to be like when you have to meet the expectations and deadlines during the exam period. So it is for a reason. Um, in terms of equipment and materials, um, we provide those. Um, lots of students pr prefer to get their own materials. It's, it's advisable to get basics, i.e. a good set of paint brushes, um, a good set of pencils. You will need to get a folder, but it will be an A1 folder. Um, don't. I wouldn't go out and get that now. Um, you can get all that from school. Um, you will get a kit list. Um, it's just something to bear in mind, but you will be expected to keep your equipment and materials uh, safe and tidy and obviously respect the department materials and equipment. 
but most of it is provided. The only time that you would need to go out and get something is if it was something that the department didn't stock. Um, apart from that, we, we've got it all in the department. So let's talk a little bit about coursework. Um, obviously, in slide one, I talked about coursework being 60%. Um, so it is a good proportion. Um, over the two years, you will have the coursework delivered to you in mini modules, which take place every two weeks. Um, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. Coursework is um, linked to the assessment objectives, pretty much exactly the same as uh, GCSE. So you will be doing observation work in terms of photography, um, drawing, painting. You'll be looking at a range of different artists. Um, we will be looking at historical artists a little bit more than GCSE. And um, we do look, do a lot of work on contemporary artists. And um, that that is a good thing because it's thinking about looking at artists that are around today. And we will look at a whole range of those. Um, you will be developing your work with your own ideas. You'll be linking it with um, mature ideas and concepts you will have to sort of think outside the box a little bit for different ideas. Um, you will refine your ideas. You will do planning for outcomes boards or sketch pads, and you will then refine your work into a range of final outcomes. Um, there isn't just one final outcome. There's, we're probably going for about two or three over the course of the two years. But you should expect to produce the equivalent of and this is a very loose guideline, but the equivalent of about an A1 board every two weeks with 70% practical work and 30% written on it. But that is a very, very loose guideline. Students work in all different ways. Um, some work in sketch pads, some work with A1 boards and sketch pads, and some work just on A1 boards. The reason we um, encourage students to use the A1 boards is to try and get students to think a little bit more about um, scale on their work. At GCSE students tend to work a little bit too small and it will force you out of your comfort zone. Um, in terms of assessment, um, coming back to the assessment every two weeks, you will be expected to fill out a formal assessment. Um, there will be your assessment, there will be teacher assessment and peer assessment, and that will inform how you make progress. So the idea of that is that you at any point in time know exactly what you have got all the way through the course every two weeks in a breakdown which link to the assessment objectives. Um, it sounds quite a lot of assessment, but it really, really is useful and it doesn't take that long, but it's very, very um, it's paramount that you do fill out the assessments every two weeks because, like I was saying earlier, it informs what you then do and whether you are covering the assessment objectives uh, in order for you to get the best possible grade at the end of it. So the exam is 40 percent. Um, this will take place on or around the 1st of February, that's when the exam paper is given out from all the exam boards all over the country, um, that, that is the date. Um, you will get about approximately um, eight weeks to prepare. Now in that time, it is almost identical to your exam that you did not long ago for um, GCSE and you have the eight weeks to prepare, you mount up your work, you annotate it, uh, you make planning planning for final outcomes, pages in your sketch pad or on your boards. You plan for the exam and for um, Edexcel um, A-level, you have 15 hours to produce a final outcome or set of outcomes. Now, that does sound quite a lot. It's actually just an extra day on top of what you had for GCSE. So it's likely to be three days of five hour exam and you do need that time to make a mature set of outcomes um, because you will have spent a long time preparing for it. Um, it's likely to be a combination of very, very fine detailed work in whatever format that might be. And you will need to link it with artists and practitioners that you've made reference to throughout the rest of the preparation time for the exam. Um, you'll sit that obviously in exam conditions. If you'd like to read a little bit more about that, then go onto the website and 
pull off the specification, but it really is exactly the same as a GCSE exam or, or, or as you've experienced in the past, a mock exam where you sit in exam conditions and you carry out what you have prepared to do. And hopefully you, you are so prepared that you will enjoy doing your 15 hour art exam. At the end of the sustained period of assessment, the what's called the controlled assignment, the 15 hours of exam, you will have that taken from you. You then can't work on that again, unlike coursework, which you can then go back to. We do then go back to coursework. In most cases, students haven't quite completed it. And at that point, we will work on the um, the 3000 word essay. We do it at the end of the course. Um, if you would like to do that during the course, then you can do a couple of students last year decided they wanted to get it over and done with. But you will get a lot of teacher guidance on that. So it's really nothing to worry about. But the exam uh, when you start the course is, is a long way off and your work will develop. So please don't think about the exam. It's um, it, it, it comes a lot later on in the course. It's the on or around the, the 1st of February of your year 13. So don't panic about that right now. Um, I talked about assessments in a bit of detail on slides one and two. Assessment uh, overview really is just to remind you that everything that you are doing for coursework and exam will be overseen by members of staff. So what we do is we have something called an independent learning log. So when you come in and you uh, sit down with your member of staff that's teaching you for that lesson, you will fill out your own assessment objectives. Um, there's a reason for this. It's not just to log and make sure that you're doing what you say you're going to do during that lesson. It's to actually inform uh, you what you then need to work on uh, for the lesson, but it also gives the staff an opportunity to feedback as well, because it's like I was saying in slide one, you're likely to have more than one member of staff. So the independent learning log uh, logs everything that the staff member perhaps writes down as their ideas and what to complete. So the next member of staff that works with you knows exactly what has been discussed. So it's a little bit like a really good example of uh, communication between the three of us or the four of us or the two of us, whoever is teaching those lessons. Um, we are fortunate to have um, Mrs. Tebbs, an art technician. So perhaps if I've asked Mrs. Tebbs to work with a particular member um, of the art and design group, then she will know what my recommendations are as well. So it's basically um, a written format of all our thought processes put together. So there is method in the madness, if you see what see what I'm saying on that. Um, you will be expected to work really, really, really independently. Um, it, it, it is, it's a demanding course, as is every um, A-level course, but in between your teaching time, you will have access to a sick form only room, which is a perk, if I'm honest, of, um, of A-level at Homer Green Senior School. Not many schools have that but you will have um, lesson slots where you will need to work on art and design a level in order to make those two week assessment periods happen. So there is a level of independence that, that cannot be denied in this course. So if you're worrying about being independent, we will have to work together to create um, a timetable that allows you to build on that skill. And it is really, really necess necessary that you do build those independent skills whilst you are studying this course. It might be necessary sometimes to work through your lunchtime. It might be necessary to stay after school. We work, run after school sessions, as you know. We do the odd Saturday session. Um, it isn't compulsory. If you've time managed well throughout, you shouldn't need to actually um, have to stay. But there might be the odd occasion where you've got uh, different deadlines to meet and it is necessary but you'll always have somebody to um, assist you in terms of staffing so um, you know it's a positive and it's a, it's a life skill. Um, in terms of big pieces of equipment like sewing machines or um, such like you can loan bits of equipment out if you are on the sewing machine um, you can you know you, you can take that. Um, we do have canvases and we do have other big bits of kit, but um, quite a lot of the students decide to buy their own off Amazon or different sorts of websites and get equipment quite cheaply from places like the works. Um, but don't buy any of that now because you don't know what you're doing. Um, 
we've got quite a lot of department rules. The, the rules are set up about in the department. It's very, very basic. Look after the equipment and materials, communicate really well with members of staff, be respectful to others, um, understand that the um, sick form rules and regulations apply when you're in art and design as well, and keep your work safe. And that's pretty much it, if I'm honest. Um, but the key is really, really good communication. Um, we get the results we do because students and staff work really well together. We work as a team. It's a really lovely department to work in. And if you make that happen, it's likely that you're going to succeed really well in the art and design subjects if you decide to take them. So you've been asked to do some bridging work. This will be an expectation that takes place from now until um, your first lesson back. And we will be asking for this bridging work on that lesson. So um, please don't not submit that because it will inform your choices for the first couple of lessons back. Um, it's not a, a huge ask. You won't be sitting the whole summer doing art and design work. It will be you preparing what you would like to do. Um, it's, list, it's listed very clearly. Um, some of the tasks are quite similar to uh, mind mapping and things that you've done like that for GCSE. Some of it will require a computer, but not packages like Photoshop. It's simple ICT ta tasks that you can abs absolutely access from home. Um, some of it is independent work. Um, hopefully you will have access to taking photos. Most iPhones now or similar phones have really, really good quality camera on them. And it will be going on to Pinterest and uh, collecting artists that you like the look of and making PowerPoint presentations. It's, it's really not rocket science. It's just to get, get yourself started, really. So can you please complete the bridging work? If you have any um, questions, a couple of the students have already started this already and have emailed me. And my email address is uh, top left of this slide. And we can have a chat about your choices. It's in a nutshell preparing your project that will last the entire two years. So your project needs to be very broad. So for instance, if you are interested in something like, I don't know, let off the top of my head, cacti, well, you can't really do that for two years, you'd be bored. Um, but if you opened your project out into the environment, you could look at the man-made environment, you could look at the natural environment, you could look at architecture, you could look at um, where people's um, places of worship are, you could look at um, habitats of wildlife, you could look at all, all sorts of things. There's a million and one things you can do for the theme environment. Um, so when you are making the choices for what you would like to study, you will need to make that project incredibly broad so that you've got a whole range of subsections that you can look at during the two week assessment points. So some of some of the um, project that you will be doing will be looking at artists. So when you are putting together your project proposal, you will need to have, well, I'd say between 10 and 15 artists that's, that you would like to look at that link with um, areas of study. But as I say, um, you can get in contact with me at any time. I'm on email all, all the time and you can ask the sort of questions, um, for example, here's my PowerPoint presentation, what do you think? Do you think it's broad enough? And if the answer is no, then I can help you decide how to broaden that project uh, out. But you will be expected, like I was saying at the beginning of this, is um, that you bring all the bridging work with you, lesson one, um, when we return and you are starting out with A-levels. I hope that's given you uh, an insight um, to the basics of A-level art, craft and design. If you've got any further questions, I suggest you email me and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you would like to look at the specification, go to Google, put in A-level art and design and you're likely to come up with Pearson qualifications. Click on Pearson and look at subjects and it gives you a drop down box. Um, click on art and design and it gives you the specification. It's quite a long document, I'm not going to lie, but there are basic summaries in there. And if you work your way through the specification, it will give you everything that you need to know. If you've got any further questions after that, 
just email me. I'm going to be on email 24 seven pretty much. And I will get back to you within 48 hours of me receiving your email. And the last thing I just want to say is I hope everybody has a great, great summer. The bridging work won't take you that long. My suggestion is do it and then get it over and done with and then relax and come back refreshed after the summer. So I wish everybody a lovely summer and email me if you need anything else.